Good morning guys, and welcome to the show. I just want it to be known that that was Fernando's idea. Hey buddy. What's up? How you doing? Oh, yeah. Cleaning? Yeah. All right guys, well today, today we got a fun one for you. Aren't they all? Aren't they all fun? They all fun. I know, it's car audio, how could it not be fun? Well, it wasn't fun for this guy, or gal, I don't know. It's a girl's car, I don't know. Anyways, roll the beginning. working on today is a 2003 Honda CRV. Sue actually owned one of these cars years and years ago and it was blue. I don't know why I thought that was important. Check it out. This is how the car has come to us. We haven't changed anything. They gave up. They started to do it and then they said this just sucks. And here's the screws. There's the speakers and a jar of peanuts. Did they say we could eat the this? peanuts? No? Yeah? No. Okay, damn. No, don't need it. And there's the radio. Ooh, Honda 830 kit. And I can understand why they decided they didn't want to do it. Of all the kits, all the kits they make, the best kits, Honda 830 kit doubled in, sucks so bad. This is a terrible kit. I mean, it looks great in the dash and all that. And, it, you know, the radio fits nice and tight. And from that perspective, it's a beautiful kit. It's building this kit that sucks. At least doing it right, which, you know, for me is not really a, an option. So it does take some time to build this kit which will walk you through the nightmare that it is the 830 kit let's take a look at the sony radio we're going to be putting in the dash this is a sony mechalis unit meaning there's no cd it's straight up bluetooth usb right here extra bass button on the other side but what makes this radio unique is this shape here it's like an upside down l alpine makes one that looks just like this just theirs is on the bottom not on the top sony does it like this for their cd transports that this unit doesn't have i mean really the radio could probably just be like this big and have it doubled in. This is what's gonna go into the dash. And for those of you that are wondering what the model number is on it, it is the Sony DSXB 700. Now these are not our product. I don't know all the ins and outs of this particular Sony radio. We sell a couple Sony pieces. By today's standards, who needs a CD player, right? Correct. Pretty cool there. I like that shape actually, because there are some instances where having it like that is really cool because it frees up a lot of space in the dash. And dashes, trust me, you need all the space you can get. As far as the speakers go that we're putting in they are the tsg 650 pioneers these are we're doing all four what are we doing we got two different speakers here. which ones are we putting in the front uh, which one do we have we oh, got two and we also have kenwood kfc 166 the devil speakers oh my gosh that's a terrible model number who did that now apparently we have two different pairs of speakers we're gonna have to get clarification as far as which one is going where it's pretty strange. Hmm. Well, we'll come back to that once we get that figured out because we definitely don't want to put the wrong ones in the wrong holes. But let's get back to building this dash kit. If you guys like model building, this kit is for you. You might just want to pick one up and build it just, you know, so you can have something to do on a Sunday. With every dash kit comes this guy here. This is the instruction manual. The instruction manual is designed to do is tell you how to get the radio out of the dash as well as what pieces you're supposed to break off. This is a universal kit. So this fits pretty much every Honda in this time period. There's just lists of different cars. But halfway through, it starts talking about installing it in specific vehicles. These are the side panels. As you can see, they have tons of different mounts. It comes with a pocket that we won't be using. It has these side panels so that you can convert it into a double din radio. These are important. It has a single din trim ring. It has a double din trim ring. And it has the actual kit itself. This is the kit right here, this guy. And you can see how it has all these little teeth on it. These are the things that fit in different cars along with these. It's usually a combination of breaking off pieces here, breaking off pieces here to get this to work. But the fun doesn't stop there. The first step though, let's get the dash part in the car and check and see if there's any notes. Way over here on page 17 is the kit we're looking for. At the top of the page, it lists an 02 to 06 Honda CRV. And right here, it tells us that we're going to need to notch the factory opening for the radio to get our aftermarket radio in there. Let's head in the car real quick. As far as removing the factory bezel, there's two screws here on the bottom. Those screws are located here and here. They're both Phillips. Once you've unscrewed those, then you can pull off this panel and unplug the hazard switch and you're done with this. What the instructions are talking about though is this area right here, this notch. These need to be removed. The easiest way to do that is with a flush trim cutter. The 
make short work of that. And those are really all the special notes for the car. Let's head back to the bench. Take the actual kit and it says break off all tabs and flush file the back side. And of course remove the center because we're doing a double dent. But all these clips along here, they all have to go bye bye. Now some of them you'll want to use some form of a grinder to do that on. But a quicker way is with a flush trim cutter. Just work in and get all the ones that you can with this first. As you can see, it does a pretty good job of getting them right flush. Now I'm just gonna take the sander though and just do a quick little sanding on the back of it just to make sure they're perfect. Rub your fingers around it to break off any of the little plastic that the sanders leave. Now we have a perfectly flushed. One other thing that I like to do is check the corners. This is where the mold is when they do it and they don't always get them perfect. Now we have the kit all set and ready to go for this. Next, we're gonna move on to these guys. Right off the bat, we're not doing a pocket so we can remove these. These just simply snap off. And according to the diagram here, we need to remove all the shaded area, which is all these in the back and then the bottom half of this one here. And that's where I like to start is anything like that that is a two piece. I'm gonna remove the part they're telling me to remove. Flush cutters, cut it, bend it forward, and that's what we're gonna keep is that little piece right there. Now the rest of these all need to come off. These are a little thicker and I don't recommend using a flush cut. A set of duck bills does the job rather well. And then the ones that are more difficult, that's when you switch to the grinder. Sand the area flat. You don't have to be too critical on here because this is the outside. The radio is going to sit on this side. But that brings us to the inside and this little nightmare right here, this line. This is for a single din, and this has to come out. Duck bills, just pull up on it, wobble it back and forth, and that'll get most of it. But now this needs to be nice and flat. Now, if you want to, you can use the grinder for the whole thing. The reason why we don't is because we don't want to have all that excess plastic on here because you have to do more grinding just to get that excess plastic off. With just breaking it off and doing the minimal sanding necessary, it does make it a tad quicker. These guys that we were talking about earlier are what we're going to need next. If you'll notice, there's two holes here, these two little guys, and there's two pins on the back of this, and then you have these three feet, and there's three locations here. This is designed to go like this, and then you push it in it pins into place. Now in a perfect world, this would stay just like this forever, but it doesn't, it, it'll, it'll eventually pop off. So what I like to do at this stage is add a little bit of CA glue to it so it will stay put forever. Now repeat the process on the other side. Let those dry for a couple minutes and that brings us to the front trim bezel while those are drying. Now this kit's been around for a while and the mold isn't exactly what it used to be. And that means that there's often little pieces of plastic that aren't supposed to be there and the kit won't go together unless you remove them and they're on this here so take a sharp razor blade and go around the top get those off once everything is cleaned off bring the two pieces together and you'll quickly see why they have to be perfectly cleaned off in order for these to snap in place and if they're perfectly clean these locks here will pull in nice and flush it would appear we missed something yep a little nick little right here in the top now the other problem is, is as you can see, there's a slight gap right here. And I, I'm not a big fan of that. So that means I need to put some glue here and here and press these two together so they stay nice and flush and it looks very uniform. Put some CA glue on the instruction manual because we're done with them. I like to grab a zip tie, spread the bottom apart here, put a little bit of glue on my zip tie, go along the edge, add the activator. Make sure to keep it off of the face of it. Just do everything on the back side. Don't get any of the glue or activator into this front bezel here. Hold it in place until it dries. Usually takes about a minute. I like to continuously move my fingers around. That way, if there was by chance some on here, it, it you know, I always keep wiping my fingers on to check so that it doesn't, or also I don't glue my fingers on. Once it sticks and doesn't move, move on to the other side. Now you can kind of see why this kit drives me crazy. It does take forever to build it properly. Set that alone and just give it a couple minutes to finish drying. Come back in with your new brackets. Test fit them to make sure you have left and right proper. Once you're sure, add some more glue into this area here across the bottom where these four teeth plug in. Line it back up. Hold in place 
till it dries. Once it's good and secure, that side sit for a couple minutes. Once you're confident it's dried enough, test fit the other side and make sure it goes into place. If you're satisfied with the fit, pull it back off and glue it the same. Just let the whole thing sit for a couple minutes. Just set it aside. Don't worry about screwing it on the radio yet. Just, just let the glue do its thing and we'll come back to that. In the kit too is also a bag of screws if you need them. For this install and this car, because it's a Honda, I'm gonna use the Universal Honda BHA 1721 harness. Pretty straightforward. For those of you guys that have never done a harness before or are curious what all these colors mean, because you've just like, hey, it's red, it's green, it's purple, just connect them. What you have is a yellow, which is a constant 12 volt, a black, which is a ground. On this one, it has two orange wires, one orange, one orange white. Their illumination, a set of whites, grays, greens and purples. The solid color is positive. The black striped color is negative. White is driver's front. Gray is passenger front. Green is driver's rear. Purple is passenger rear. Red is going to be accessory. Blue is going to be power antenna and or amp turn on. This Sony that we're putting in follows the standard wire configuration, meaning that all these wires are identical to the ones that are on this. All we have to do is connect these two together and we're in business. Now that the harness is done and the time it took to do that, our dash kit is nice and dry. We can apply it to our radio. It has an R and it has an L telling you what side is which. Slide it over the face of the radio and push the radio in until its desired depth. Grab the bag of screws that it came with and add two screws to each side. And it's done. It fits really nice. And when you've added the glue on the top to keep that kit nice and in place, it does a beautiful job of, it looks good. And once the bezel goes over it, it looks even better. It's just no fun to build. But the customer doesn't know that. And the end user and the guy sitting in the passenger seat driving with you doesn't know that. He just, you know, he'll know if it looks bad. All right, let's get this into the car. Talk all you want. So let me tell you about my life. When I start working, <laughs> the first thing we're gonna do is grab our plastic pry tool and pry behind the handle it's a flip under the big bar it's two screws one on the left one on the right for the one on the left you gotta use an extension kind of deep so a regular bits not gonna not gonna do the job then from there on the lock unclip it disconnect the power locks the panel on the top push the pin on the corner that comes out and from there it's just a clip for the window switcher and the trunk, there's two clips. Now that we have the door panel off, now we have to see what kind of bracket we're going to use. For this, we're gonna use the best kits, BK Edge SB518. To remove the speaker, grab you metal pry tool, push it and pry it out. Then push it up and it has this metal clip for the speaker wires it's a push clip so the next step is to add some foam on the back and the front of the speaker like you see here the factory has foam so we're gonna mimic the same thing foam in the front foam in the back now we have the wires right here but we don't know which one is positive which one is negative so for that we're gonna grab the harness that Dean just made and check harness so plug in the harness, we find out that the green with the black stripe is positive. So our speaker has four wires. In two pairs. In two pairs. So one is for the tweeter on the dash, and the other one is for the mid-range. Have to make sure we hook both wires up in their pairs. I like to add some black heat shrink and red heat shrink. So we went with the Kenwood speaker because it's very shallow. And like you see this, the metal on the door can get in the way of the speaker. If you're using a deep magnet speaker, you have to cut this part. It's all secure. Since we're done, just put the door panel in the reverse order. Plug your harness in. When plugging in your radio, always work from the longest cable to the shortest. Get it in place, put one screw in, and then turn it on and see if it works. All right, we got sound. Turn it back off and continue putting it together. Depending on the type of radio you're putting in, you of course want to do as much testing as you can at that point. If you're doing a CarPlay, Android Auto Radio, test for that, backup camera, steering wheel controls. Do all your testing before you get your radio all set and the dash back together. That way you don't have to take it back apart again. And as you can see, it looks really nice. It's a nice looking dash kit. Now the one problem with you starting your installation and bringing it to us, we only had to use the screws that we needed to put the dash back together. Fortunately, they pulled way too many screws out. That means they're gonna get in the car and think that we might not have put all the screws back. This is from the radio. 
Those are the radio screws that held the brackets on the side. You don't ever have to remove those for this car. But they didn't know that because they didn't read the instructions. Oops, you're bad. But this one's done. That's it. Awesome. This is a quick, simple, little yay, DIY, didn't work out so DIY-ish. And that's why we're here. That's what we here. Now you have a nice, awesome install, looking all sexy. God, I'd hate to build that dash kit not knowing what I was doing. Ugh. Yeah. All right, guys. I'm sure I'm gonna get a phone call on that one. Thank you so much for watching. Fernando. On to the next one, guys. You guys have a great night as always. We'll see you later next time. Bye. What's with that thing? Bye, Jesus.